Danny, lead things off this week, man. What was your reaction to that nice, nice main event that we had on Saturday between Brandon Royal and Tatsuro Tyra? It was a fantastic fight. It was one of the best fights of the year, and it was a card that wasn't all that great, so like it really had an amazing ending. And some of these Apex cards, I feel like, you know, we, we get a little down about them because maybe they're not as stacked and the matchups are not as, as exciting. But it kind of reminds you that at any given night, you can really witness some uh, some awesome shit. And that's what it was for this UFC Fight Night 244 card. Um, it was a card that didn't have a whole lot of expectations. It was kind of like, eh, all right, what did the main event really mean uh, all that much in terms of like being on paper? And then, you know, we really saw one of the best fights of the year. So, um, yeah, I mean, I guess don't judge an Apex card by its cover. But, uh, yeah, fantastic card or fantastic fight. And, uh, yeah, it was, it was a good time. Goes, what did you think? I think this is one of the best. Uh, oh, the host has muted your mic. The host does not like You're good. me. You're, You're good. good. <laughs> huh? uh, if I wanted to introduce somebody to our sport, somebody that's never watched MMA, I would probably point them in the direction of this fight. I honestly thought it was one of the best flyweight fights I've ever seen. Both guys had moments on the feet. They had moments on the ground. Uh, there were moments where you just felt like this is the end. You know, anything can happen here. This fight's going to be over. And the other guy would just turn it around. You got to give props to their corners, right? I mean, this was war. The adjustments that were made on both sides, coaching wise, were fantastic. This was just all around such a good fight. And considering what you have to deal with on the other side of the sports world, right? With college football, with the MLB playoffs going on. Shout out there. Uh, there's just so much to compete with. So to get people's attention is very difficult right now, mixed martial arts, especially when it's an apex card. But these guys showed up and they made people turn those things off and watch MMA. So proud of both of them. I thought it was just honestly, for sure, for me, fight of the year, maybe even one of the best flyweight fights I've ever seen in my life. Yeah, and it broke my heart to see Tatsuro Tyro take that first loss, man. He looks so disappointed. Matt Wells, how about you, man? What did you think of this scrap? Man, it's a, it a fantastic fight. You got to see the ebbs and flows, the, the pros and cons of both fighters, right? Um, it started out in the first couple of rounds as simply like that clash of styles, right? The striker versus grappler. But then as the fight went on, we saw, you know, Brandon Royvel said, hey, I got something for you on the ground too. So I like to see those adjustments and I like to see that the fight really kept you on the edge of your seat the entire time because it was just that constant back and forth. And I really look like one of my favorite things about not only Brandon Royval, but I guess in this matchup was that his ability to just go out there when he was on his feet and just snap that jab off. He His boxing is so crisp. He's such an entertaining fighter to watch, man. And he's just so he's so game for, for wherever the fight goes, right? And I think you'll see uh, Tetsuro Tyra on this loss here, even though it was, a, you know, it was a very close fight. I think we'll see him learn a lot from this fight and what he can do and how he can implement a little bit more aggression in certain spots. Um, I think he had some big moments on the ground that he could have done a little bit more with, um, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to adding some more ground and pound to his mix because he was focusing a little bit too much on control, I think, at times. But I think he'll learn a lot from this fight and he'll be just fine. But, man, that was an incredible fight. Yeah, and I noticed nobody really questioned the scoring, and I also looked at MMA decisions, and it looked like it was pretty unanimous there. Although one judge, I believe it was Saudi models, did score for Tatsuro Tyra. Uh, social media didn't seem to imply that there was much of a problem with the decision. Uh, so that's good. But, Danny, I'm going to go back to you. Um, stranger things have happened. And I know we're going to get to Kaya Sakura getting the next title shot versus Alexander Pantoja. But did Roy will do enough where he can maybe just chill and get the winner of that fight? For now, yes, for now. But let's wait and see what happens in November when Brandon Moreno returns to fight. Amir Bassi, someone who is a fresh face to uh, Alexandra Pantoja, but this could very well not mean anything if uh, if Pantoja loses. But um, yeah, that fight has a lot of weight. Brandon Moreno is one of the most, um, I would actually say he's the biggest star of the UFC flyweight division right now. We know that he's a very important player for the Mexican market, and he's a damn good fighter as well. Every loss that he's had in recent years, it's been super close. It's really been a split decision. That guy's never been finished or really ran over. Um, and then Amir Abbasi, again, as I mentioned, is a fresh face and a guy that also promises to be uh, very talented and, and could be a future champion in the, in the division. So 
I would say that for now he is the front runner, but like that could very well change depending on how things shake out with Moreno and Albasi and and that uh, result. And as well, we gotta see what happens in the main event of uh, or common event of UFC 210, right? I think if Pantoja wins, like, do we really want to see a third fight with Royval, especially that they just fought last December? Like, it's kind of difficult. So um, he's definitely in a good spot, but I wouldn't say that he secured the title shot. Timetable, right. George. The the mm -hmm. timetable is awful for Brandon Royval. Like what he's mm -hmm. done, I think he does deserve it. But like Danny said, where he's stuck right now, so much has to play out. And depending yeah. on what happens and what, he's in no man's land, dude. I feel like he's probably going to end up having to take one more. Uh, it just sucks. And, you know, Crisco Wild here in our chat says, if we see Amir Albazi beat Brandon Moreno, I'd let Albazi skip over Royval. And I probably can't disagree with that. The sport is so much about what have you done for me lately and the timetable that Royval's on and the amount of time he's going to have to sit. Uh, it's it's going to be hard, man. It's an uphill climb. Hey, but goes isn't this like something that we've really been asking for for a long time in the flyweight division? Like it's yeah. always been like super top heavy, where it's just like, I mean, literally the champion and like maybe one contender, and then after that, oh, I've already beaten everybody else. Now we have like so many different options at play. Like it seems like it's almost a first for the division in the UFC, to be honest with you, that we have so Fun, many though, options right? that we can go with. It's it's actually pretty exciting to me. Yeah. Uh, goes. What would you do with Tatsuyo Tyra now that he's experienced his first loss? He's now sixteen and one. He looked demoralized, but the dude's only twenty four as well. Yeah, you know it's it's so weird with the sport because sometimes you have to look at it as a sport, and then sometimes you look at it from the UFC's eyes, right? As a business, I feel like they love Tyra. I think it's a guy that they can get behind. It seemed like the fans really loved him. The highlights of this fight, I think, will serve him well. It, it doesn't so much feel like a loss just because of how well he competed i would say probably give him maybe a guy like steve ursig a, a fight that you know is just going to be all over the place again uh, a winnable fight and then he's right back in the mix but like matt said what is the mix you know everybody's fighting for the spot and everybody is showing different uh, moments of brilliance so it's it's really tough but you know if you're going to take a loss i think this is the type of loss you want to take i think he's going to learn a lot from it and turn things around Mm -hmm. uh all right matt let's close up with this one how much hype did he lose i mean i don't think anyone thought he was overhyped but you know again it's a shallow division and it was a great fight so i don't think too much steam comes off yeah no i agree with you i think he's uh i think he's still going to be in a good spot but we are in like i said a second ago we are in the spot right now where like there's so many names vying for that title shot and he's still he's just going to be a little bit outside of that mix right now so it does knock him down a little bit but hype wise i think like look who he fought against he fought against a guy who was very dynamic in that he's very very sp speedy with his jab on the feet there's not too many guys like that in that flyweight division that can do that to tyra i don't believe so i still think he's in a good spot it just came down to a uh to a very tough matchup against roy val and roy val is obviously very hungry to get that title shot um I think it bodes well for for Roy Val, you know, um, that he's so uh, spicy on the mic, so to speak, right? So he's going to be that guy that he might be on the outside looking in, just kind of like Tyra, you know, for a couple of fights here. But, you know, he's going to be able to uh, back it up on the mic at least. Um, Tyra, though, I think he's going to be fine. Uh, one or two more fights, and then his name is going to be right back in that mix for a title shot as well. Yeah. I think if he's spicy on the mic, Grant Dawson's got to be like a Carolina Reaper or something, right? <laughs> Give that guy a mic. Jesus. <laughs>